The Super Nintendo was a huge leap for gaming, going from 8-bit to 16-bits meant that games could be bigger, better and more beautiful than ever. Developers were keen to bring beloved 8-bit franchises to this new frontier, and Capcom were no exception, bringing Mega Man, the massively popular NES franchise, to a new generation of gamers in a new decade. For myself, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just knew I liked the little robot guy on the front of the cover. Little did I know it would be one of the first really hard games I'd play. I remember loving every moment of this game, and I sunk countless hours into it whenever I got home from school. But I never actually beat the game because of its difficulty. I always wanted to pick it back up and finally complete it. So what better game to start off our SNES Quest with than this old classic? Good day to you! My name's Ryan, and welcome to SNES Quest Recaps. As soon as you pop in the cartridge and hear the beautiful Capcom sound, the Mega Man X logo phasing in from the top of the screen and the music starts blazing through your headphones, it's basically Capcom flexing their track mode muscles at you and you can't help but be drawn in like a moth to a flame. Pressing start sends you straight into the action, a ruined city being attacked by evil robots. This scene and the first level provides a great intro to the game giving the environmental storytelling and the stakes required to drive you in your quest as Mega Man. The level's fairly easy, but acts as a sort of tutorial where you can learn your capabilities in a relatively safe space while still feeling good to play through. At the end you're introduced to Z, who's like your mentor slash role model, even though he doesn't actually appear that often. Even for the player, you think, wow, I want to be that strong later. Z's introduction made such a big impact on me and he quickly became one of my favourite characters. I always wanted to play as him and I was so happy when they finally released a whole series based off of him for the Game Boy Advance. This cutscene, like many of the others, a short but a call to watch while giving a bit more exposition. Anyway, after beating the stage, we reach the level select. Like most other Mega Man games, you can tackle the levels in any order that you want gaining power-ups from each of the level bosses and making it harder or easier for yourself depending which power-ups you go after first. Mega Man X is a bit more unique however in that stages can affect each other. For instance, beating Chill Penguin's stage first changes fire mana stage, freezing the lava that's normally there and making the stage a lot easier to play. You can basically just walk past all of the obstacles that are in your way. Sometimes the changes can make the levels even harder however as in the case of Spark Mandrill stage, which gets intermittent blackouts and makes it very difficult to see where you're going. This makes the game so much more fun on repeat playthroughs, as you can experience different stages in new ways. Every stage also has a whole set of hidden items and power-ups to find, incentivizing exploration and thinking outside of the box. Sometimes you even have to use weapons in order to reach the power-ups you need. There are even a few secret bosses to fight along the way too. I especially like the one under the ocean. I don't know why, it's just kind of cool fighting a robot sea monster. The power-ups can range from health upgrades to extra abilities for your character. The best part is, you don't really even need them. It can just make the game easier for you if you collect them all. Although you look really cool if you get all the armor power-ups. Mega Man. Majestic AF. Hair flowing in the wind. He doesn't have hair, but it's still flowing. Under the helmet, you can't quite see it. The bosses are fun to fight, each having unique mechanics and attacks, providing challenges that are memorable and fun to overcome. The only real frustration I had was with the last boss, who has three phases with no heals in between. This guy was my brick wall as a child. I made it here so often and never passed the second stage even though I had every power-up and all the energy tanks, so I should have been able to beat it. Even now, when I tried it again and finally did beat it, I didn't even have all of the power-ups either. It was just really tough. This is really where the exploring comes into play, because with all of the energy tanks, I could have had a much easier time here. But then it might not felt as satisfying after I beat him. I did go a little bit mad. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Woo! The real standouts of this game, to me, are the graphics and the music. The game looks amazing, being crisp, vibrant and colourful, having a great unique style that looked great back in the 90s and still looks good today. The music is fantastic. That's it really. Just listen to it! On my 
playthroughs, I always found myself humming along to the soundtrack like the crowd favourite at an open mic karaoke. I'd even say it's one of the better soundtracks produced for the Super Nintendo, being made by Setsuo Yamamoto, who has been involved in almost every Capcom release as part of a sound crew since 1993. For me, the game's an absolute joy to play through from start to finish, giving me enough challenge to feel rewarded at the end of each encounter and keeping me invested with the character growth and exploration. Add this to the great visuals and audio, and it's no wonder why it's on so many top 10 lists. So, what's our score for Mega Man X? solid 8 out of 10. Thanks for checking out my little Mega Man X review. I kind of like these short form reviews a little bit more than the longer ones we've been doing. I can get more done and honestly I can get the videos finished before I start getting bored of them too. <laughs> Frickin' hell. If you're interested you can check out our Twitch.tv channel, the link for it is down in the description below. If you want to check out some of our other YouTube videos, there should be one floating on the screen right now, probably Spooky Doom, I'm not sure, I don't really script these end credit scenes. Anyway, thanks for watching, take it easy breezy.